Okay, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, my name is Carrie Ryan. I'm an associate professor at UNR, and I'm happy to moderate the next session, which is entitled Simulation Platforms. Simulation, as we know, is at the core of what we do, whether it would be simulation to support design, simulation to explain our experiments, or simulation to predict performance. If we really want to achieve performance-based design, we need high-fidelity simulation models that can accurately predict performance based on our understanding of the hazards and the systems. And it's up to the engineering community to stay up to speed on simulation. So the concept of this session is to highlight some of the key simulation platforms and tools. And I admit probably a lot of what is being presented up here is not new to us, but at the same time it's rapidly evolving. And so this is our opportunity to find out what is the state of the art. Our first speaker is Professor Michael Scott, uh, at Professor of Civil Engineering at Oregon State. And Michael, he's a contemporary of mine way back graduate school here at Berkeley, I promised I'd embarrass him a little. But my perception, Michael has always been at the forefront of simulation, starting as a graduate student, contributed to some of the key uh, development of materials and elements in the first version of Open Seas, and then significantly enhanced uh, the capabilities of Open Seas with analysis algor algorithms for fluid structure interaction and most recently added to the uh, computation or interfacing open seas with Python. And I've heard a lot about Python, but I admit I don't really know what it does and I haven't gotten my feet wet yet. So I'm excited for this presentation just to hear more about what we can do with Python to support performance-based engineering. Okay. Uh, thank you, Carrie, for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about today is uh, using Python to enhance computational simulation. So um, it won't be, uh, it'll be pretty broad. I won't get into anything really specific, but it's nice to be at kind of the, the pivot point between some of those presentations we saw earlier today talking about different simulation workflows and uh, data analytics, and a lot, a lot of that's underpinned by, by Python. Um, so I'll, in, th in this talk, I'll kind of talk about Python broadly, and it'll maybe give some context to what you saw earlier today, and then it'll lead in nicely to uh, the subsequent presentations within this session. Okay. So kind of the outline uh, here, just introduce Python, talk about its ecosystem. Um, how it can be used in engineering education, and then some of the research applications with Python. And I'll kind of touch on machine learning and uncertainty quantification, and then make a few concluding remarks. Okay, so what is Python? I, I think a lot of you know what Python is. Uh, some of you may not, uh, but it's, it's an interpreted uh, high-level programming language. So interpreted means it's not compiled, it's just executed on the fly. And high-level means you can do stuff like write functions and make it uh, com uh, communicate with other um, codes, uh, do control structures like loops and ifs, all that uh, fun stuff. Okay. It's also one of the most popular programming languages today. All right. So if you look at the TOB index, all right, which is a pretty objective uh, ranking of, um, of programming languages uh, as of this month, uh, Python is the third most popular programming language, all right, behind uh, Java and C. Okay, so it's used broadly, used widely. Um, doesn't mean it's the best, or that anything uh, that any of these are the best, but it's uh, one of the most popular languages. Okay, so th these are the the top six um, languages as of this month. Um, I kind of promised to myself that I wouldn't make this. A presentation about open seas, all right. But I will point out if you look at the bottom of this list, at number 49 is Tickle, all right. <laughs> Barely made the top 50, 
All right, but it's there. I think if OpenSea's users, or if OpenSea's was not tied to Tickle, it probably wouldn't be on this list at all. Okay. So why is Python popular? Okay. Well, it's free and open source, which a lot of things are these days. But one of the main things within science and engineering that's made Python really powerful is just a mature set of modules uh, for scientific computing applications. All right. So NumPy, which does a lot of linear algebraic operations, SciPy, which has some uh, random variables, some other you know, uncertainty type things, a lot, a lot of other scientific uh, modules within SciPy. Pandas, if you like R uh, for statistics, Pandas is a very similar using data frames and things like that. Um, matplotlib, uh, if you like to use MATLAB to plot things, matplotlib does basically the same stuff. Anything that you could do in MATLAB, you can do in Python these days. All right. And then for machine learning, like PyTorch is a very popular uh, package for machine learning. And then Jupyter Notebooks, which are kind of they're not a specifically Python uh, thing, but they're embraced by the Python community to uh, summarize computations uh, like you would in MathCAD or other uh, worksheet type environments. Okay? And I'll touch on some of these during my talk. But uh, again, uh, it's not an open seas presentation, but another module uh, that I have to throw out there that's available within Python is the OpenSeas uh, Pi module. So this is a Python 3 module. All the commands from Tickle have Python equivalents in OpenSeas. It's an easy PIP install. It was developed by Minji Zhu at uh, Oregon State. And this is an image of um, OpenSeas running within a Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so for those of you that have used OpenSeas and struggled with Tickle, check this out. <laughs> Okay, but Python is also uh, a big part of uh, engineering education. All right? It's becoming a more common uh, kind of first programming language for engineering students. Uh, for me, it was C++. Uh, for those who uh, went through undergraduate education or undergraduate engineering degrees before me, maybe Fortran, Pascal. Um, but Python's starting to kind of make its way into the freshman sophomore uh, programs in the US, okay? But, you know, we need to kind of vertically integrate uh, through the curriculum such that our graduate students, uh, when they get to the point where they're doing all these amazing things that we've uh, seen today, that they're proficient with Python and workflows um, and um, it's that type of vertical integration, I think, is necessary to really accelerate uh, the research that's that we've seen today, okay? Uh, it's also you know, within graduate courses in structural and geotechnical engineering, uh, I give a lot of Python assignments. My colleagues at OSU give a lot of Python assignments. Uh, students hate it at first, but they come to love it uh, uh, towards the end. All right. Uh, and there's also, like, at UC Davis, I pulled this uh, image off Twitter uh, from Sumit uh, Sinha and Trevor Carey. Uh, kind of, this is a student-led uh, workshop or boot camp where they just decided we need to know Python to do our research. So they self-organized and um, made it happen. I think a, a three-day workshop uh, completely uh, student-led. Okay. So there's there's a big need to, uh, to, to know Python. It's just uh, uh, de facto. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jupyter Notebooks, um, drill down a little bit more into what these are. All right. So these this is an interactive kind of environment where you can uh, concurrently have your Python code, uh, visualization, uh, text, and markdown, uh, images, and equations all within one book. And it's, it's live code, all right? So you can execute the code and then throw up a plot uh, right there within the notebook, okay? Uh, so this is available at JupyterHub on DesignSafe, uh, which you'll perhaps hear about later in this session. Uh, you can also run this locally through Anaconda, okay? uh, but it's, it's a great tool for research uh, and teaching. Okay. So like this, this is a, an image, another image, you know, here's some markdown formatted text, and then here's just some code defining some variables. Okay. All right. But it's all bundled in one, uh, one notebook. So you've heard a little bit today about workflows. Um, to 
be honest. Uh, I didn't really know what a workflow was. I've, I've heard it for a few years. Um, but what, what is a workflow? Well, it's how you get from A to B. Like when you're doing large scale simulations, it's not all one software that you're using, right? You need to have one, you know, somebody needs to drive the ship and then call this piece of software to do this, take that output as input to the next piece and just kind of get you from, from A to B. And that's a workflow, how you get from here to there, okay? So a lot of the, the workflows that I think you've seen today and you'll see tomorrow as well and later today, Python is what's kind of driving the ship and uh, doing the, uh, the steps to get you to um, from computation to visualization to whatever outcome uh, you need, okay? So it's kind of like a glue uh, between different modules, okay? So you can have a lot of modules, you know, running within Python, like NumPy or Pandas, uh, even OpenSea's Pi. Uh, TweetPy, during the morning session, there was some talk of, you know, scraping Twitter data. Well, there's an API for that, all right, where you can just pull everybody's tweets and look for different information and keywords, like hashtag earthquake or I felt an earthquake. You can search, it's all, there's, it's very easy to do, actually. Okay, but then you know that that kind of Python core can then you know and work with AdSerc, you know, a workflow it's like for storm modeling or for education through Canvas, all right, uh, Abacus for uh, computations, other softwares. You know, it's possibilities are endless. All right, you can even have Python write your papers for you if you just have it pump out uh, LaTeX. All right, okay. Um, but, you know, a lot of this is, you know, these web-based applications, again, which you'll hear about in uh, Zhang Li's presentation on this core, or in core, sorry. Um, it's all run through Docker or containers, which bundle up all the dependencies and then can be deployed to pretty much any platform or any operating system uh, that runs, or that's Docker compatible, and then uh, you can run these workflows in any environment without having to install a bunch of software, okay? So it's a very, very powerful, Do Docker's not a Python thing, to be clear, but it's just, it uh, fits into the same picture of cloud computing and uh, web services. Okay, okay. so uh, some of the applications, uh, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty quantification Python packages available that pretty much treat whatever computations you're doing as a black box. All right. So assessing uncertainty at different levels of your natural hazard simulations, there's you know, like Python code that's plug into the workflow at some point. So that like UQ, uh, UQPy, which is a general purpose uncertainty quantification uh, package uh, developed by Michael Shields and his group is uh, available for download and use. Uh, UQFIM uh, through Sim Center. All right. And then also, you know, other packages like PyRe and OpenSea's Py, which have some uh, uh, reliability and optimization modules embedded within them. So all, all within the Python universe, depending on what you need to do, it's, it's possible. All right. Okay. Okay. So uh, so machine learning. All right. Uh, so like. At a very fundamental level, the easiest uh, machine learning 101 is kind of data regression or linear regression, right? Uh, so you could, you know, use Python modules, or, you know, really any uh, least squares, right, to uh, to uh, do linear regression. But this is just showing some some data, and then how you could uh, fit lines in order to do. Uh, machine learning algorithms, or is one layer within a, a network. Okay. And also, we heard earlier today about image recognition, all right, deep learning classification. I mean, a lot of this is done through Python. There's Python modules available to do this. All right. So like the fee challenge that uh, Professor Masalam talked about this morning, you know, how can you use machine learning and vision to classify no damage, flexural damage, shear damage, combined damage. All right, so take training data and then uh, let it do the regression for you. Or, or okay. All right, so it's just one, one example, but again, the, the point is, is that there's modules within Python to, to do this. Okay. All 
Right? And then you know, deep learning with neural networks is another code. This is a project that I'm working on with Professor Barb Simpson up at Oregon State, sponsored through PacTrans and CLIP. All right, but using or developing neural networks to uh, do physics-based uh, machine learning on tsunami loading on bridges. It's a very complex problem. We don't understand all the physics, but if we have enough simulations down here, as well as some experimental data, we could train a neural network and use encoders uh, to get us down to a subspace uh, that would fi find the key features and then extract us back out to, or decode uh, out to engineering quantities of interest, like total loads and then um, loads at the connections, right, which we can then use to uh, perform uh, assessments or further uh, steps in a design uh, for tsunami resistant uh, bridge structures. Okay. So um, a lot of potential uh, for developing applications uh, with Python. Again, MyShake was something we saw earlier today, text, text analytics and just data science in general. Again, Python's kind of what's driving most of these uh, workflows. Okay. If you want to learn more about Python, there's a lot of stuff uh, online. Uh, DesignSafe uh, has a YouTube channel. It has a lot of good tutorial videos, uh, some with Python. There's a lot of Python cheat sheets out there that uh, are good references. All right? And then if you ever like, Google your problems with Python, you'll end up at Stack Exchange or Stack Overflow nine times out of 10. All right? So anything you want to do, just Google it and you'll, you'll find it. All right? All right. Um, that's the, the era we live in, right, these days. Okay, but I think the key thing is, you know, as, as researchers and practitioners and people generally interested in uh, large-scale simulations or you know, simulation in general, that there's a lot of students coming through that have vast knowledge of Python, and we really need to just, you know, leverage that, and uh, they could do some amazing things uh, with all the tools that are available. All right, so I think... Uh, you know, really, really try to leverage that and uh, make the most of uh, students' uh, knowledge. Okay, so I think that's it. And I'll turn it back to Carrie. And <laughs>